I'm back with another post-game commentary. Uh, and by I'm, I mean Shane Ruman. And this is a recording of my third round match of the double elimination tournament to determine uh, the two team captains for Canada that will be going into the uh, online national team tournament starting in September, being organized by the people over at the Discord League. I think there's 27 countries at last count, so it's uh, going to be a pretty big deal. Uh, various countries are picking their teams in, in various ways, so this is the way we Canadians decided upon it. Um, that we'll have a tournament to determine the top two people who will go on to pick the third person and all, any alternates. I'm playing against Litterers on Dragon Crab, and myself, I'm on Crab Unicorn. Deck lists, I would say, are pretty standard as of pack two, which was the last legal pack of the elemental cycle for this tournament. So none of the uh, you can uh, see just using right stance against most everyone. I'll put Rally under the box. Uh, Dragon doesn't really matter. There's no bounce. So um, mulligan wise, looking over this, uh, there's no holdings for the Yusuki. Kyle Envoy is always welcome. And Satoshi is someone I'll keep almost every time <laughs> just to find those keepers especially against dragon because i really want to get that karate district as soon as possible it's dragon is a very tough matchup um but uh karate will help bring it to 50 50 maybe 60 40 um from significantly lower so here i'm trying to decide uh i lost the coin flip and i'm going second so i put out the caillou envoy um the other option the other line would have been to by Satoshi with a bunch of fate and then just pass. But I put the Kaio Envoy and then he has a bunch of small stuff, but Sugenja is a pretty imposing character, so I figure he might pass. So I decided to grab the passing fate um, and see if I could weather the storm uh, of the first turn or two and, and hopefully only take uh, two breaks in two turns or maybe even one. Be lucky. I had two, three conflict characters in hand too as well, which kind of influences as well as an assassination. So I was pretty set up to handle little guys. Um, so I'm just trying to decide restoration balance is a thing. Am I going to bid five? Am I going to bid three? I didn't really have any intention of attacking, so I go for five. And I might not be even attacking second round. Um, so, and with conflict characters to play. So I bid five. I draw into a pretty nice hand in general. Like I said, I already have the conflict characters. I get more conflict characters. Two HU Wayfinders will let me find those dangerous provinces. Um, and two Spyglasses is always nice, although I don't have anyone really to put them on right now. Into the conflict phase we go. Uh, yeah, he's bought a pretty imposing board here. He's got the mendicants. He's got the initiate. He's wisely putting a fate on them to protect his next round characters um, from way of the crab. He drops a pathfinder's blade on the mendicant, and uh, obviously dragon likes to attack and attack often. They're one of the best aggro clans uh, for sure. New lion box, new unicorn box might put them ahead, but currently I'd say dragon is the best at aggro. They also happen to be best at the mid-game, too, but that's another thing. It's really good right now. Um, I passed my Conflict Opportunity, of course. I don't want to hit Restoration with nine cards. He's going to attack Water, which only makes sense, um, forcing my Caillou Envoy to block, which on the military I was probably going to block anyway. Uh, political, uh, you know, one less stat, so... I'll block. It's defend the wall, so I can um, assassinate the uh, mendicant uh, with the Pathfinder's Blade, which is a good value assassinate. Um, and then normally I would be able to bow the Doom Shigenja if he didn't drop a conflict character, but he had a favorable ground, so he could move in the Doom Shigenja, and he's winning this conflict now. Uh, not that the water ring really matters, so I just I don't play anything. Um, and see if he wants to go for the break. If he just wants to take the win, it's it's of not much value other than for favor. He drops a Daisho on for for uh, fate. So at this point, I mean, it's looking like I'm going to lose defend the wall. I don't have a lot of options. I could drop another character and use my box. Uh, not that defend the wall is that valuable because um, he can use his box and probably his other cards uh, to get over the top on me here. So. But I felt okay about my position. Like I said, I'm just hoping not to lose too, <laughs> lose more than... I was thought for sure I was going to lose one province uh, this first round. Uh, I was hoping it's not shameful. Uh, now I just want to not lose the second one. And if I go into the next turn with 8 fate to 2, 
Uh, I'm not unhappy about that, um, especially since you just have one character. So drop the Wayfinder, and I peek at his provinces, and I see a Manicure Garden, which is definitely the one I want to find. I put a Fate on it just in case I draw a Cloud the Mine next turn, and there's a target I want to use. So I start spending, uh, which I think I might have panicked a little bit um, here. Uh, I could have just gone in with a lot of Fate, but uh, the first break went pretty quickly. Plus, he has an Initiate that can honor itself, which is a good chance of breaking. So I decided to go a little bit more on the offensive because I found Manicure Garden, So I, um, which will equalize the Fate here uh, quite a bit once this turn is over. So I attack with the Skirmisher into Manicured Garden. I want to Void off his Initiate, which is not high-value Void, but it'll still, it'll, uh, get, barring any Reprieves, wipe his board for next turn. Um, versus, I mean, I'll have just slightly more fate and a wayfinder. So not a big advantage for me, but this is a game all about small incremental advantages. Uh, he takes the fate. Uh, I pass. I have no intention of breaking. I have no way to do it <laughs> this turn. I just want the, that void ring. Take the void ring off the table. Um, do a thing. He may have a conflict character he's thinking about here. That's the main thing. Uh, his deck list didn't include Assassinate, and that's pretty standard not to have Dragon have Assassinate. So Initiate um, loses the Fate, and also I did it because it make him a bit more wary about um, spending a Fate to a Ring. Um, uh, because the Initiate has no Fate on it, so he won't be able to reuse the Honored status, although he's first next turn, so he'll get that money back. Uh, he hits Shameful here which is decent. I mean, it's a two-glory uh, to guess you initiate. Uh, Wayfinder's only zero glory, so it doesn't help hit, but still swings the conflict back. Um, so he's losing, and he has to spend that fate or a card to uh, get in a position to be winning. So at this point, I also start thinking about favor. Um... Uh, you know, he's not breaking Shameful. Um, so the argument would be that I don't invest any resources into um, defending this or defending this ring um, because it's not a break. It's just the Earth Ring, which isn't terrible. One card at this point, it's not the big deal, especially it's like bidding low for Resto anyway. Um, but I drop another Wayfinder, um, check out another province. That's always good. Uh, use my box. Um, so I'm putting, because I'm really thinking about favor. Um, I don't want Smiko to pop up, and I know he has two censures. So I'd like to get and keep favor, which is not easy. Uh, not going to be easy, especially with Ancient Masters, the new conflict character with two glory. But I want to at least try to contest favor here uh, at this point, since I had a chance to do it. Uh, he drops a Reprieve on, which means he can use his box to go to four, and he'll have an honored uh, initiate for next turn. Um. I lost Satoshi in that first attack, which is another reason that I probably... Uh, given how this first turn's going, maybe Satoshi with, like, two fate would have been a better buy pass. Um, so in the end, he does win the ring. Um, I lose Mountain Does Not Fall, which is a very good card for next turn. And he gains favor. Um, not... It's an okay turn. Like I said, I only lost one province, which I was expecting to do. Fate-wise, I'm not that far up, but I do have a slightly bigger... Well, arguably the same board, because he is his guessing it has a significant little stat. So... Definitely down, I think, already, um, since my board and fate advantage is not as big as I would have wanted it, and he has a two-fate fire ring coming next turn. So, Dragon's doing dragon things. Uh, and then he flips um, Samiko. <laughs> so, I comment, wow. Um, like I said, I was, this is exactly what I was worried about, was him getting Samiko with the favor, and I was just trying to, to stop that exactly. I mean, I could have went crazy and put spyglasses and stuff on Wayfinders to try to stop that, but um, yeah, so he puts Samiko with a dupe. Uh, so the, I'm thinking I'm way down now. I mean, Samiko is going to be very difficult to deal with unless I can draw a cloud, and he doesn't have a let go. He hasn't played any let goes yet. So play the Kaiyu Envoy. Um, maybe if I can draw another Assassinate and Way of the Crab, something. Uh, I don't put a Fate on it. Uh, maybe I should have um, to threaten Fate Phase Way of the Crab. That's probably would have been the better decision. So, as you can tell by the length of this video, <laughs> it's probably a dead giveaway. 
and sort of how the second turn uh, is looking to shape up to go, uh, things did not go that well for me. So I'm going to switch more from straight up commentary, just talk about my mistakes because that's very instructive. It can be painful to do sometimes, but I do make a bunch of them um, here. And my opponent plays very well. Uh, it's not it's not like I just you know beat myself at all. He he played quite well, but I definitely made some some mistakes. So I'll, I will uh, talk about them. You know what I was thinking at the time or wasn't thinking. So he gets a J masterpiece. It's a one of in his deck, but you know he draws a lot of cards, so that's okay. Which just makes this uh, exacerbates problems. I can't really use the um, kind of advantages of crab to build up a stronger economy over time because Jade Masterpiece is, in my opinion, one of the strongest econ games, econ cards in the game, in that it keeps, um, denies a fate to your opponent and gets you an extra one uh, in a lot of situations. So it gets a three fate Earth Ring. Um, so even though I'm at nine fate, which is impressive, his, you know, his fate plus board is, is better than mine, even going into the next turn. Uh, so he attacks, obviously doesn't want to attack Shameful if he can avoid it. Uh, hits med and crab does not have scary provinces so hits meditations which is not great um, but at least it'll help me get that so you go to there one turn earlier um he's coming in with political five and i'm thinking about do i defend this the problem is i have no another part of the problems without, without having satoshi is i have no characters to really tower up which is the whole game plan with Crabicorn. so i have lots of small characters i don't want to put attachments on uh, so I'm not entirely sure what to do about that. Uh, I just defend with the Envoy. Don't even use Box, it just not to lose the uh, the Honor, um, which may not have been that valuable at this point because it wasn't shaping up to be a long enough game for me to really worry about Honor, but Samiko doesn't bow. She's ready and honored uh, to beat me up some more <laughs> with uh, five military. So I do value away the Crab. I mean, it's not... I didn't draw the assassinate, so at least I get rid of uh, you know the potential defender um, because if he wants to defend, um, he's going to have to defend with Smiko, which he doesn't want to do. So he drops this Haruma skirmisher as another character uh, for his military attack. So he has some covert. I drop mine, uh, which here's where I'm starting to tilt. Honestly, I'm starting to tilt a little bit. I mean, he has a favorable ground. He has a skirmisher with covert. So me dropping a Covert Skirmisher is not particularly useful. Um, he dropped his too early. I mean, a minor play mistake because it wasn't his turn. So using the Covert is not very helpful. He could have used it in the, either put it in the conflict or just use it when it was his attack. So I attack Void because there's no other fate on rings. And I already have one off Sumiko. So I figure I got to get rid of Sumiko to have any chance in this game. I um, also recognize that I don't have any um, characters with fate on them. So that is a bit of an advantage. So I can attack Feast or Famine now. And if it's either just a, basically a blank province or if I can get rid of it somehow, which is um, that it just don't have to worry about it going forward. It's a break that's quote unquote sort of free when a lot of the dragon provinces are rough. So I could have dropped a fan there and maybe I should have. Um, but honestly, I was playing really defensive in back foot this time. And I didn't know if, if that one, if. May, having one break was going to help me that much, so I'd rather keep the attachments for other things. But I'm staring down the face of my third break um, on turn two, which is, is absolutely what I didn't want. Um, because if you, but um, you know, if I take three breaks, then uh, really I'm just going to have to rely on whatever I can buy next turn with a, with a lot of fate, but it's high variance flop, um, and you can have covert and all sorts of things. So. This third break. It's always a bit... I mean, my opponent doesn't mean to do it, but... Uh, so he attacks Earth, which makes sense. I mean, the other rings are not particularly valuable. Um, he could have done water to, f you know, about my one-cost guy, but it's not that really that useful. Um, but when attacking Keeper of Earth always is just, just disrespectful <laughs> to the keep. Not that I have any Keepers, but, uh, you know, he's uh, not at all worried about losing, which I wouldn't be in his position either. So block with the only character that I can because this... The Wayfinder was um, coverted. Um, so I start to think, okay, how... I mean, he still has box. He has favor. He's at seven. He's up by six. So I start thinking, well, what can I do, if anything, to stop this break? I have a Skirmisher, which with box could add two, take me up to four. Um, he could use his box and still be breaking. I mean, I could start dropping Watch Commanders and stuff. 
Um, but I have so much fade, I'd put in the skirmisher anyway. Um, and then I can, uh, I was think. I think I might have tell. I can't remember exactly at this point. Um, so yep, so I'm at two, he just passes because I'm already breaking. Use my box because I'm not, I don't have any more conflict characters. No other characters are going into this conflict. She, he bonds eyes. Um, oh yes, and I'd forgotten to count the favor, even though, you know, it's just purely my own fault. It's right there in the text box. Um, so he bonds eyes, um, cause he could have just used his box to break anyway. I don't, not entirely sure why he bonds eyes at this point, um, instead of just using his, his stronghold, um, to take it to eight. So, you know, he didn't necessarily have to do that. Uh, but then he can pull back the, the skirmisher, uh, which makes some sense to defend against my military attack. Um, although I'm, you know, I could just go back to, to Feast or Famine too. Um, although now I've got a character with a fate on it. <laughs> Not the smartest Feast or Famine is open, but uh, given I'm using up cards, I didn't necessarily want him to use a conflict character without having it out next turn. So I lose, I lose a Manicure Garden um, pretty handily there. Samiko's still um, readied. So Samiko's first player is quite oppressive. She's going to be in three conflicts, um, which is pretty hard. I, so I attack, but really the only reason is I'm just thinking, okay, which ring? I don't want to have a ring, uh, two rings with one fate. So he gets a fate and I get a fate. So I just decided to go for the ring because I'm going to lose favor anyway. And uh, take it off the table for having fate on it next turn. So he takes the favor. He keeps it on military, which is, you know only makes sense against crab. I have n I already used my way of the crab, um, which I probably given the position I was in uh, that far behind, it might have been better for me to not evaluate the crab, to drop the skirmisher with a fate, and then try to fate phase way of the crab to get rid of Samiko. Just to you know, he could have reprieved, he could have dropped another conflict character, which he did do. He was worried about an another way of the crab, even though I played one that turn. So. We're going to third round here. I have a good amount of fate. Um, Samiko, barring you know a second reprieve, which you may have, is going to go away. So I'm not out of it. I'm in a very, very bad spot. Uh, if I could defend here, um, he's going to lose a good chunk of board. Um, and uh, we can see where it goes from there, although it would be a long, long road, and I'd be heavily disfavored. Uh, but I got some decent attachments. If you, you know, he has let go. So, <laughs> but uh, so I, you know, I buy some stuff. Um, I may have. I mean, the argument for two fading the crisis breaker and the borderlands defender. There might be some argument there that I should have single faded them and then bought the Yusuki as well. Um, which I can see for sure, especially with Vanguard Warrior out. That probably would have made more sense. I should have taken the threat even more seriously than I was. Um, but I just was thinking, you know, if I have any chance of winning, I got to build a superior board and keep it. So that's why I went for two fates. So I have first attack. Um, so do I attack it, uh, and go, is it worth it? Or is it more worth it to just keep all my characters for defense? Uh, especially as an Eaton Master. I mean, an Eaton Master flip, um, three of them, in fact, was also pretty bad for me because he had no used no swords at this point and drawn 21 cards so and that uses probably at least three maybe four swords so for sure you can use that neat nester three times i decided to attack with the crisis breaker because unless it's clouded which it has a chance of being um good chance actually Sugenja, and he hasn't played any cloud of the mines drawn 20 cards but i decided to try um so i attack with the crisis breaker because he's going to be used again into manicure garden um obviously feast or famine's off the table at this point um, and I uh, want to bow. So if Samiko, uh, either he has to put enough defense that I'm not going to win, or I can bow Samiko, which is pretty valuable. I mean, she's a five, six political character. So he's thinking over what exactly he wants to do. So to stop this crisis breaker, I mean, from winning water, he'd have to go neat and master with some attachments, which probably he has, and he probably could do. Maybe he doesn't have as many swords as I fear. Or you have to put in Shigenjin Tattoo Wonder, which would be more than I'm contributing. So I decide, do I go for the break? Do I attach any attachments here? Uh, and I, in the end, I, I probably should have put something on it because the plan was to reuse them again. 
Um, this fate, even though I had two left over, was a bit tight for all the things I wanted to do, which included mountain does not fall, etc. So there's definitely, and talisman and watch commanders. Um, so that's why I didn't attach the spyglass at the beginning, because more cards wasn't necessarily what I needed here. Uh, so he attaches the Pathfinder's Blade on the Neaton Master, um, pre-attaches it instead of readying. So he could have defended with the Neaton Master, uh, I think, there, um, and then readied him. Uh, maybe he wanted to use both those readies for other things, though. So I'm looking at what I have and what's going to happen here. I mean, he can cancel my rally and attack whatever he wants. Um, so he can attack fire, which only makes sense, because the Neat Master is too glory, and it's going to be used in another conflict, at least one other conflict. And he comes all in on... Let's see what he comes all in at. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, what can I do to not lose here essentially that's what it comes down to what are the value cards i have in here watch commander is not really gonna do much other than stats at this point he has eight honor uh so talisman could possibly save me uh, and mountain will help a lot because he's going to be attacking at very least with the neat master again so he's attacking uh political and he doesn't let me swap it so the skirmisher can't do it so i i put on the watch commander um which i think Definitely a mistake. That was definitely a mistake. Um, dropping on the Watch Commander. So he lets go of the Watch Commander, um, which was basically the best thing about that Watch Commander because it didn't wasn't really going to do anything for honor for me, but it ate up a let go, which opened up Talisman. So my play here should have been defend this as hard as I could um, and then um, Talisman on his second attack into Shameful Display. Uh, which you probably would have broke, but, you know, I wouldn't lose. And then we can go into the next round, and it'd be Neat Master versus my two characters with more fate. Um, so my plan was, okay, I would... Uh, mountain does not... Attempt to Mountain does not fall here, uh, which was greedy. I knew he had two centers. He'd drawn half a stack, and he has favor. So, you know, if we count mistakes, that... Thinking I was going to get that through was a mistake. Uh, but I thought it was okay it was canceled because I saw fate on the air ring. Although I'd forgotten... Pure out play mistake. I'd forgotten that I'd already done political, uh, military, and the skirmisher couldn't get that fate from the air ring, um, which I needed to play talisman. Um, so he hadn't let go uh, any of my fans. Uh, so he might have another let go, but he might not. Uh, so here's where I try to... Mountain does not follow my borderlands defender, which has at least a, I'd say, 65% chance not going to go through because of the censure. So I spent my last fate on that. That's just bad news bears. Um, he wasn't breaking, um, so I could have let this conflict win. And uh, and then, you know, just ta dropped in Talisman and let him crush Shameful um, next, and then go on to next turn with four broken provinces and see what could happen. Uh, so he, um, yep, I, I box. Um, he drops Ornate. Um, Fan. So at this point, he's a military, so I'm really hoping he doesn't have a cloud again. He most likely does. There's three in the deck. Um, so that at least I can uh, defend uh, against the Neat Master and whatever conflict character he adds um, here, which probably wouldn't be that big. So Skirmisher plus Neat Master. Uh, Skirmisher plus Crisis Breaker would be four. Um, and like it's spreading the darkness up to eight, which means he needs. 16 to break, uh, which would be very hard for him. So that this is my hope. Um, obviously, don't attack. He dice shows, which I knew he had uh, from earlier in the game. So his neat master straightens. Big old, like, 9, 10 strength with favor and the stronghold. <laughs> very imposing. So I definitely need this crisis breaker. There's just basically almost no way. Uh, spreading the darkness would help a lot. And yeah, he clouds my crisis breaker so that that's pretty much it if he has any pumps at all so he attacks by spreading the darkness um so i get it i get up to five he needs to go to 13 um he uses box to go to 10 so you know two more swords but the bonsai seals it uh, he has two bonsais in his deck it's not unreasonable he drew them both yeah and that's gg i don't have um I don't have any bonsais, uh, uh, so I needed, uh, let's see, he went to 14. So if I could Tana, 
I actually could have stopped it um, if you didn't have anything else, which you very likely could have had a Pathfinder's Blade or something like that. And yeah, that's that's the game.